welcome back, actually, to the Perfect Balance podcast, Adam. Yes, I Because, did. what was about a year and a bit ago, Dundee Dab, first Dundee Dabby of the season last year. Yeah. You made a brief appearance. Very, very brief. Yeah. Yeah, very you look so keen for being on camera there. Yeah, I'm equally as keen now. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but Absolutely. performing in front of people, it's fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm getting that. Yeah. 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 But we'll All touch right. on that another time. Yeah. Now is about free. Absolutely. Because, uh, as you might have noticed, we have a Sunderland legend in the, uh, in the... And again, that's something we'll touch on yeah. later on. So, I've known you a long time now. Absolutely. In fact, next Saturday, you're the best man at my wedding. Yes. So, thank yeah. you again for that. It's all right. Yeah. The speech was great. Uh, it was. Or, the speech was awful. Yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, I had, I had too much to drink, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, so... That's... So... Through our friendship, I have come into the Sunderland family somewhat. Absolutely. I went yeah. to the uh, United game at Tannis a few weeks ago. Yes, yeah. I wish I was able to. You were genuinely it. gutted you weren't there, yeah. despite being in Las Vegas at the time. Yeah. I would have much rather been in Las Vegas. No, <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen Sunderland play in years. Would the last time have been when we were at um, Liverpool, Liverpool game? Yeah, yeah. Liverpool game. On where the Steven Gerrard failed off to. Lost 1 yeah. 0. I believe it was Lazar Markovic yeah. who scored, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ever did anything again in his Liverpool career no. apart from scoring that goal. I don't know where he is now. Oh no, I think it was, was it Benfica they got him from, something like that. No, he no. was one of those like signings back then for Liverpool that were they were trying to get probably where they are now. Yes. But they just never hit any of them. Yeah. But then they started sending guys from Hoffenheim like Firmino Firmino and everyone's like, Oh, there's another one. No, yeah. he actually turned out to be quite good. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the last time you've seen Sunderland. It was. So yeah. before we go on to your first Sunderland game. Because that we're going back to like the old school versions of the podcast that we did back in the Captain's Cabin days. Yeah. We've got a bottle of Captain's Cabin rum over there. That's now very rare, and we may again. Is it sold after? Well, it's it's probably worth a lot of money now if you've got one unopened because. Uh, oh, mine's well. Oh, it's well opened. Yeah. But we, by all means, we can have one yeah. later on. It'll the probably get finished tonight. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I'm um, anyway. I digress. So we, what we used to do on those episodes was basically go on the, your football journey. Yeah. As a fan. So like me, I'm a Celtic fan, not from the city of Glasgow. Yeah. You, you're a Markham who's not actually a Markham. So why are you a Markham? I lived, I lived in County Durham for several years. I think I must have moved up there for... I must have lived in County Durham and played for Langley Moor mm-hmm. for, I would say, six or seven years. Because you were born what, in Orkney, weren't you? No, no, no. You were... I was born in London. Oh. You, you've told me you're, like, again, Fa- we're fans, best mates, but yeah. like, you've told me you're story, usually drunk, yeah. and I never remember. So take me through it again, so I so, remember it's on camera. Uh, Mum's side of the family's all from Galway and Ireland. Yeah, Ireland yeah. Dad's side of the family are from England, mm-hmm. and my dad was in the army, so we moved around. So yeah. born in London, moved to uh, Portsmouth, near Portsmouth anyway, then up to Durham. Then up to Orkney at the age of maybe 12, yeah. and then I was there until I left to go to Dundee. Dundee. So you've been a bit of everywhere. Yeah. So that was why, so that's when you got into your football then when you were in County Durham on the shoot. Yes. That's why yeah. Like, yeah. I was maybe between the ages of, say, eight, eight and 13, eight and 14, something like that. So those sorts of years, and, and not having a place really that I knew before then. That, that was home really at the team. time, yeah. so that was the team. Yeah, and my friends supported them. Yeah, and, and that always helps. Yeah, we lived in the same, as like near some of the players and stuff. That was before the days when all the players were on ridiculous wages. Oh, so, yeah. so it it was almost like they were people as opposed yeah, to like they're like accessible. Yes, absolutely. you hear stories like that. Um, I'm a big fan of True Jordy on YouTube. Yeah, um, and he's got one of his um. The regular guys on his show called um, Rory Jennings, big Chelsea fan, and the two of them, they often talk about how when they were kids, Brian Drew Jordy could go to like Newcastle's training ground and be like, "Oh, alright, Shearer, can I get like a photo and like a, yeah. an autograph, or whatever?" He, Rory, would be able to do the like same. He could just go up to Chelsea's training ground and he'd be like, "Oh, there's like Charlie Cavalli over there, and there's like Zola kicking the ball about." I'll just try to do that now. We Couldn't yeah, you know? no, not at all. Um, we had. I had a, a chance meeting with Alex Ray when he was playing for Sunderland. Yeah. I was invited to a friend's house to watch the Sunderland game on Sky Sports. We didn't have Sky Sports, my friends did. Yeah. So I went round and Alex Ray was there watching the match. And um, what happened was that the commentators were like, oh, well, Sunderland are missing Alex Ray today through injury. And as a, like, as yeah. a, as a nine, ten-year-old, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just sitting in the lounge. So yeah, it was it. 
it felt different then than it does now with you know, professional football, especially yeah. you know Premier League and top tier ones. Yeah. But they are much better at poetry now. Who are? Well, I suppose Giggs retired about 10 years ago. Oh, of course. We'll not yeah. get into Ryan Giggs. No, that, that's no. just um, time stamped this video very well. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Ryan Giggs' poetry. So anyway, that was the first time you were watching games around about that time. Yes. What about the first time you went to a match? Take us through that. Um, I was I meant to go to a match a few weeks before I actually did. Uh, so I had two friends who had season tickets and there was four people in our sort of friendship group. And they had a spare ticket. So it was either me or my pal that were going to go. So it was the cruelest way to do this to a, a sort of a nine, ten year old. Uh, maybe, I may, may even have been older, I may have been 11, I'm not sure. Actually, no, no, maybe just before. And it was a coin flip as to who went, who got really? to, go to the game. Because they, <laughs> they couldn't decide, and that's fair yeah, enough. But yeah. I lost that coin flip, so I didn't go. I don't know what match it was. Um, but my first match was uh, Worthington Cup, so the modern day League Cup, mm-hmm. uh, at home against Manchester United. Manchester United beat the team by the by the looks of things. Uh, yeah, we were looking at the lineup just before we yeah. started. And, and you said this was like two thousand. It was when I went there. So I mean, fair enough for beat team, but still European champions by the United. Yeah, uh, uh, York and Solskjaer up yeah. front, so that counts. Aye. Yeah. Um, Phil Neville. Yeah, Sunderland legend John O'Shea playing for Man U. Yeah, so aye, and relatively full strength Sunderland side. You might remember. Yeah. And you were, you were in the Premier League at that time, obviously. Yes, that's we were. That, that was, was like Phillips winning the Golden Boot that season. It so. was 2000, 2001, I believe, he won the Golden Boot. No, was he not 99, 2000? Because Larson was 2000, 2001. Was he? Yeah. yeah it might have been the year before, yeah. yeah absolutely. But again, so he's one of the best strikers in the world at that point. Who you've the, got. 30 goals, 36 matches. I think he missed two through injury or something that the, the season before. But yeah, Phillips played. He scored the winner in extra time. So that was good. Julio Arca who uh, scored for Sunderland again, so another hero, I love Tony Rock, I had him on the back of my shirt, after yeah. 33, I believe he's still lives in the North East as well, he's Argentinian, but I believe he, he was working with a small, like, almost like, not South Shields, but a team like that for a long time, Kevin Phillips is now the manager of South Shields, mm-hmm. actually, yeah, so, yeah, I think Arca's still in the area. But and then from that year as well, you had like Neville Quinn end up buying the club, didn't he? Yeah, uh, he was on the bench on that match, but it was it was Phillips and Quinn. That was that was the that was what made us very very good at that time for certainly scoring goals anyway. And then a few years later, when we sort of started to struggle, we had an Irish consortium by the club uh, promised a world class manager to come in before revealing himself as the manager. <laughs> so that was funny. You can't, you can't hate him. It's almost like, you know, it, Shearer did that at Newcastle, where he didn't buy the club, but didn't he become the manager of Newcastle for a bit? Yeah, and he took them... To, well, yeah, because um, who was it that um, got sacked that season? Was it Sunas? Was it Sunas? Well, Sunas had buggered off by then, I can't actually remember. No, I don't. But mid noughties Newcastle, but whoever was in charge of Newcastle at the time, had yeah. a terrible season, and then Shearer took over with like six games to go, and he couldn't... He couldn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. But obviously... Correctly, I think you saw back with them saying Shearer took you down. Yeah. That was his last act as a, a member of Newcastle Football Club. Yeah. No, Quinn wasn't much better as a manager. He's still a hero, you know, but yeah. My earliest memory of someone was like um, Peter Reid as manager. Yeah, that was that was Peter Reid era, mm. the, the Phillips and Quinn era. He was fantastic. He did really well. I think he got sacked after, if I remember rightly, after... I think we were seventh or eighth one year in the Premier League, and I think we went down to maybe thirteenth or fourteenth, and they're like, "That's not good enough." Out, and then you, we just dropped from there. Because like you had such lofty ambitions, because obviously you played at Roker Park before that. Yeah. And Stadium Alight was like built with the intention of we're going to be at least in the UEFA Cup yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. So you want to have this big European stadium. Yeah. To like try and attract players. Mid to upper forty thousand. Yeah, it's still a great stadium. Yeah, it's lovely. Like, could do it like a paint like, but at least they've like done the seats. They they did the seats a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. It's that cool yeah. thing where is it like, it's like almost put like a, a flamethrower or something on it or some weird. It's like you apply uh, heat to it. And I it think like I think some of the seats were actually changed. Oh, they actually changed. I think they changed. Like they got a bunch of fans in and they offered them right, just come in and change seats if you're a fan. And loads of people turned up and did it. Yeah, uh, some of the, I've seen the some of the, the I've, I've seen the videos yeah. where they. And I find the clip. I'll put it in. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool. It's like you apply heat to the seats and it's somehow like. Melts the dirt off it or something or whatever, but makes the colours brighter. Yeah. It's a good way to like um, revitalise the stadium almost. Yeah. Um, but so Sunderland around at that time when you were getting into them, again, they're a good side. But yeah. Like I said, they kind of drop like a stone and they've had ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are you thinking about them these days? Well, as, um, as of an hour ago. Right. Uh, well, yeah, Alex, breaking news. <laughs> yeah. 
as soon as Alex Neal has left to go to the most mediocre job in the world, Stoke, they are twenty something in the in the league. We are fifth. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say generously. At best, it's a sideways move. Oh, it's, um, but it's, in in all likelihood, you like I said, Sunderland are on the upward trajectory right now. Yeah. Whereas Stoke have just been kind of stagnating in the championship for a few years. We've got way bigger stadium, way bigger fan base. Um, got he, some good players. He, yeah. Uh, he claims that he wasn't backed by the board, despite the fact we're the third highest net spenders in the championship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know what that is. He was on a rolling contract, which he that may have put his nose out of joint slightly after bringing this up. He may have wanted a concrete so deal. So just one season like to season deal. Yeah, yeah. That's becoming more of a thing now. Like right. um, when Lennon was at Celtic, he was on one of them. They wouldn't the board wouldn't give him like a, a deal, and he obviously ended up getting sacked. But you can imagine. If he didn't love Celtic as much, but Neil's maybe an example of that. He's not got any amazing ties to Sunderland, no, so he's all. like you said, he's like I've done something for you here, so reward me. Yeah. That's probably when they should have said, right, no, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so that's going to be a shame. Um, but we'll see. We we bought a Costa Rican international who's going to the World Cup. Just yeah, yesterday. you told me this the other day. Uh, but it's not Brian Ruiz, no, or Joe Campbell, or or, or Killer or, Navas, <laughs> or Brian Costa, Viedo. Costa Rican football, yeah, yeah, who also played for Sunderland, yeah. uh, Sunderland legend. Um, no, um, yeah, 18, takes five or six times to Costa Rica, going to the World Cup. Not nice, it's fine, but I don't know what he's going to do with my manager. From, did you get the guy from uh, Paris Saint-Germain? Hey, we're looking favourites. What's his name again? Because I, I noticed uh, you, you sent me the link to him. I've, I've forgotten. Was it uh, Mihu or something? Something, something like, like that. that yeah. I, Celtic are looking at him, but I think he's more inclined to go to Sunderland than Celtic purely because we could top even more chance of game time, yeah. you know. And he's got a direct route to the Premier League, potentially. Yes. Uh, or, or just a stepping stone going forward. Yeah. I, I don't think he would be, if he signed for Celtic, he wouldn't be in the, he's not going to be getting Champions League football because he wouldn't be in the squad. Right. I don't think he's there for... And for I think you said he's a centre midfielder as well. Yes. And we have a million centre midfielders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bye. So we've got irons in the fire, but we don't have a manager at the minute, so that's a, that's a shame. Sean Dyche is the one you want, isn't it? You said that to me. <sighs> he's the only one that's available. It's him or Chris Wilder. They're the two people who seem to be available at the minute. Because they're the two other people who were tipped for the Stoke job. So yeah. I'm assuming. Or Michael O'Neill, get my hand in. I don't know much about him. No. No. He did all right with Northern Ireland. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. He was the one that was uh, there before. Uh, I don't even know he was in charge of Northern Ireland these days. But yeah, it was him that kind of like brought them back to like just not being shit. Yeah. Um, they're actually like quite a decent national team now compared to where they were. And that's why Stoke eventually got them. But they, yeah, they, I mean, it is such a weird move to like now to go from Sunderland to Stoke. Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Because like, some of them like drops some silly points I've noticed in games like that QPR game the other week yeah. a goalie, 2 nil up and then a goalie ends up scoring yeah. and they've not been losing games like, no. the worst you've been drawing so for coming up from League 1 yeah. it's a good start yeah we're fifth um, got Norwich tomorrow at noon which we won't be able to watch so I'm going to have to take that yeah. um, so I assume we're going to lose that one because we have no managers or anything like that but um, you do yeah, have, we have two, two strikers scoring goals they've both do. got three and four games sort of thing three and five games right, so you've got Loch Ness draw for yeah. Ross Stewart. And Ellis Sims. Ellis Sims, who did well at Hearts last season. Yeah, they're and both looking good. Robbie, who's been on the channel for Hearts fans, was wanting Hearts to try and keep him. All right. But obviously, he's. Um, so that's a, a seal of approval from him. Anyway. Yeah. He's doing a good job Sunderland so far. Though. Absolutely, yeah. Um, He was on the bench for the first game because we just signed him a couple of days before. Started in the next game, scored two goals. So, And then he's scored since then. So, yeah, he's. he's, he played, doing well. he's both of them played up front together. Yeah, two big, strong, tall, fast. Strikers, uh, wingers either side, just Roberts just and then Roberts had, former Celtic player. Roberts, Roberts hasn't started. I, oh, I, I, I think Roberts may have come off the bench once all season. And there's the lad on the left who I really like the look of in the playoffs. I can't remember his name though. Uh, Pritchard. Is that the guy who's just dribbling past people for fun? Uh, yeah, uh, Pritchard is very good on the wing, and we have Gooch on the other wing. On the bench, um, right. Yeah, he's he Alex really Alex Neil really liked him. Um, some Sunderland fans don't like him that much. I, he's got a great chip last for last week. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't mind him. But I yeah. Um, so we've got wingers. We've got um, Elliot Embleton through the middle. He's good at like um, sort of spring passes yeah. to get. He was to getting a lot of love at uh, Tannadice, Elliot Embleton. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think he's youth players, you know. He 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 was one of our youth players yeah. and brought him up. Same with Dan Neil. Yeah. Uh, Dan Neil in the centre midfield. He's. Quality. He got sent off at the 
we uh, last weekend um, or the weekend before, I've forgotten, or maybe midweek. But he's phenomenal. He's he's our new Jordan Henderson. I don't think he'll necessarily reach the heights, but he's certainly a Leicester Everton ten foot yeah, yeah mid-table, Premier, mid-table League well. Premier League player going forward. Give him one cap for England, sort of job, you know. Um, yeah, he's very very good. Um, you got you got your boy Luke Ryan. Yeah, he's your I, man. again, uh, most Sunderland fans love him, but don't think he should be playing. He's not. He's not. Really? He's not a talented footballer. He tries. He tries really hard and he's passionate. I love him. I'd, I'd start him. Uh, he's been playing centre back this season. He plays anyway. Yeah. That's a good one of the yeah. things about him. I, he scores goals as well. Um, he scored against Rangers in pre season in the 45 minute long match that I paid a penalty. Oh, yeah. Oh, I paid the money. Was that, which was in Portugal for some reason? Yeah, yeah it was in Portugal. It was like a, like a tourist destination. So there's just like loads of Sunderland Rangers fans there just on holiday, oh, just right. turning up to the game. And stopped at half time. We were winning 1 0. 0 9 scored from a corner. Well, not directly from a corner, but yeah. So we beat Rangers 1 0. Yeah. So, that's so fine. you could be in the Champions League this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, who else have we got? So that's the centre midfield. We've got, uh, I like the look of Jay Matetti in centre midfield. He's almost like a kneecap and type of figure in as much as he breaks a play, tackles, passes it on to the more creative people. And then we play sort of three at the back. Dennis Serkin, who's looking really, really good. Got him, got him from Spurs, I think, for very, very cheap. Um, oh, uh, Jack Clark as well. I forgot. That's him the on guy the Jack, about. Jack That's Clark the on the way. Yeah, yeah, he's rapid. He's yeah. phenomenal. He's really, really good. He's good with the ball at speed, though. It's not just like pure pace. Like, it was against Luton, I think. I was yeah. watching that game and I was texting him. I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. He goes, oh, we've got him on loan. I was like, so will we sign him? Because yeah. he looks quality. I, I think we have signed him now. I think that's yeah, I think we made, we made that permanent. Set the backs are a bit iffy at the minute, so we're looking at a couple of people. I think we're looking at getting someone from Brighton on loan, band or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our sort of weakest area at the minute. And then a young lad, Pat Singal, uh, who's looking fine. He's not necessarily that great where corners and deliveries mm-hmm. coming out and all of that, but a great shot stopper and you know, fairly competent. It would have been nice to have someone slightly better than him, but he doesn't. He isn't a detriment to the team. No, it's but been a very good start, though, because yeah. like one of the things you're hoping for is just basically not to come up and lose every week initially. Yeah. Establish yourself in the league. Looks like you've done that already. Yeah. I mean, like, so what do you think you're, the, the realistic ambition is? It going to be trying to fight for playoffs, or is it just let's just stay up comfortably and see how we do next year? Under Neil, perhaps a really outside chance of playoffs. Because we have been doing well. Um, even Sheffield United managers were saying after they beat us 2-1 when we were down to 10 men that Sunderland are a playoff team. Um, but now, realistically, just I don't know, give us 12 to 14 right. just, and then just see from there. Get comfortable, yeah. get a bit more money in, yeah. develop the squad a wee bit more next season. Right. So you're looking, you're looking up back. Yeah, yeah. So that's Sunderland now. We've talked about Sunderland back then when you first started following them. Talked about your first game. What do you say your best moment has been at a match physically? Watching Sunderland. What's your favourite memory of watching them play? I've not seen many wonderful moments okay. there in person. You know, just winning, winning matches occasionally here and there. I've, I haven't been at any of the playoff finals or the Carabao Cups or anything like that, or down to Wembley for anything. So. There isn't a big live moment that was incredible. Like beat Manchester United at school, you know, that that would be the one that would stick into my mind. Yeah, especially Just, being there, yeah. Yeah, especially as I was so young and Manchester United were the team that everyone looked at yeah. at the time. But no, no, we don't have much glory, yeah. so. So what about like just as a fan in general then? Would it be going up last year or like the Papa John's trophy at an empty Wembley the season before? <laughs> I, I really liked Going up 1-0 in the League Cup final. I was going to say, that's the happiest I've seen you watch. Yeah. We were yeah. in the nether end and Dundee watching yeah. that. I would book like a table upstairs. Yeah. Like, they've got like the projector that comes down. And it was again, it was like, some, like yeah, we're going to get like 5 or 6 now, but who cares? It's All the right. final. It's uh, This is not going to happen very often. So you were yeah. like, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy this. Yeah. And after like five minutes, like Barini just like gets in behind company and like smashes it in. Yeah. And then this is when like, this was like peak our Sunday League football teams. This is when everyone would come out for like a big game. Yeah. This is right. This is Adam's team in a cup final. Let's go. 
Paul, I think, had worn his Man City Balotelli shirt to yes. try and wind you up yeah. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. just got up in his face like, Barry! I couldn't at the celebration yeah. and all that. I think that was it. And everyone's like, what the fuck's going on? But I think it's something that, like, they only did, just, just lost that game. Was that like I think, 2-1 or 3-1? I think, I think it was 2-1. I, if like, it was 3-1, I wouldn't be surprised. It was like a game of good uh, count themselves that day. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like it was like, oh, they've, they've scored, but they'll still get battered. It wasn't like that. It was, no. They nearly did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was because that's a it's a it's a cup final. It was good. And it's it was against good. Man City. Yeah, Aye. And this was like um, man, it was like not maybe Man City as they are now, but it wasn't like when they just first got the money either, and they were still kind of established. They were established like yeah, we are a top team now. Yeah, it's still like Aguero and company, all of those. Yeah, that's yeah, right. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So they were they were they were excellent. They were a world class team, top top five, top six team in the world at that time. So yeah, no. No wonderful glory that I can remember, live at least. Well, aside from that, apart from recent years, just watching the telly. Uh, okay. Well, the good thing is that's probably still to come now. You got that to look forward yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It would be good. Get You'll beat the millionaires of Newcastle in an FA Cup <laughs> final maybe one day. That would be good, yeah. Well, we've won two FA Cups, so I wasn't very pleased with them, but yes. I hope you watched one on DVD. I think we did, yeah. Nin- 90, 1973. Yeah. Uh, FA Cup. On DVD somewhere, probably lost it now. Just yeah. buy it again. Actually, that's your birthday, sorry. Yeah, 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 just re buy 1973 FA Cup final. So, again, speaking of maybe classic Sunderland, then this this thing we have, yeah, Sunderland Legend, how did that start? And explain what it is because it's stupid, but I love it. I don't, know. Be applied to I don't know, I think I just started it when you're just speaking about random footballers in the pub or, or when we're playing football ourselves and. I had to oh yeah, he played for Sunderland. He was a Sunderland legend, and I think it just any time anyone mentioned it, anyone that's ever played for Sunderland, even if it's just one one game, that, you know, um, that's that's what it is. Even yeah, from like a buoy would would be oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't. He, he didn't play. We signed him, and then he got done for something. Bad like things. Tax or gambling or something like that. So, but he signed. He was there. He owned a shirt for a period of time. Yeah. So that's how that started. It just sort of escalated from just me. That anyone's yeah. doing it. And they could, I, I just play it for like any team now. Yeah. I do it with my mates and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you don't get it. You don't yeah. get it. Well, I'm like, trust me, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But even, what about like Ricky Alvarez? So you, so despite being a bit yeah. of a prick, he's not a legend. Yeah, like. absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't really say he isn't. He cost us a lot of money. And it was like 11 million or something stupid I like that. I think it was more because of the court fees and everything that, that came with it. That was, we were really poorly run. Still not perfect now, but that was bad. It reminded you know what it reminded me of almost like did you hear about the whole Rocky Bashiri incident at Hibs? No. So basically, Hibs had this guy on loan from a team last year. I can't remember who he was playing for last year. Big set at half called Rocky Bashiri. Yeah. Big Belgian guy. He's a bit. He's all right, but he's not great either. It was one of them. He he did okay on loan, but you know, thanks, but you know, yeah. he, thanks for your six months. Aye. There's the door. And Hibs had put out like the press releases and all that. They tweeted out saying, "Thanks, Rocky. You know, all the best for your future career. Fact, good luck in your future endeavors and yeah, all that." Yeah. And um, then it came out a wee bit after that that they triggered a clause in his loan deal that the club somehow didn't know about or forgotten about. Whereas if he played in so many games, he signed. He, he, he triggered no, no, not just oh. signed a three-year deal. Okay. Which in up in the Scottish teams. For a player that's not that great, it's fucking mental and expensive. Yeah. yeah. And so now he's like tied down. Um, is he playing? Yeah. He gave away the penalty last week against Rangers. Oh, okay. And he's just yeah. a bit, he's a bit of a clumsy boy. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that game. So like Hibs were kind of, it was a bit of a shit game. Hibs were just kind of sitting in. Rangers weren't creating much either. And just out of nowhere, the Rangers centre half goes towards the ball in the box. He's not going to get it. It's going through to David Marshall and goal. And then Rocket Shea just panics and goes, Aah! and then just like holds the guy down. All right. Out of nowhere, gives away a penalty. So he's, he's not the brightest um, second half in the tree. Paul McShane springs to mind. Paul McShane. Ireland legend. Yeah, also Sunderland legend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if he played for Sunderland. Yeah, he, he, made, he made mistakes. He's the one that I remembered thinking. I think he met like Effie Ambrose, who's one at Celtic as well. He was a bit like Bambi on ice at times. Yeah. But yeah, that, I, I, that Alvarez thing just reminded me a bit of that because it was like so messy and it was like. Just didn't end well. Didn't expect well because he was on loan from Inter Milan, was it not initially? But then you t- remind yeah. me what it was. It was like 
Was that a loan deal that it turned into an option to buy or something? A a loan, mandatory buy or what? I think it was a loan deal with mandatory buy or something like that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, and then he went back Dead. and we were like, there you go, thanks. And they were like, no, no, you bought him. Oh. Take him. And we're like, we don't want him. <laughs> Pass the over. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think he ever came back. But we had to pay yeah. because we bought him. Yeah. So I think that I think the contract was ripped up, but they still needed the money because technically they sold him. So yeah, and then we went to court and he threw the nose for that. And then there've been a few messy ones like that. Remember and we had to pay his contract. His in- inter contract. We, we had to pay the contract that he was at with oh. us. And just, just, they, just not playing. Yeah, we just said there you go. Just was that something a bit similar? Was it was around about the same time. Maybe it was at Southampton. We had that. Was it an Italian centre forward? And he ended up just like, I think it was, he quit, I'd have to look this up again, but he's like, he ended up like, was it refusing to play or like, he, he quit and went to become a DJ? Oh, I have like no that. idea. I only know Graziano Pelle as an as oh, Italian was, striker for, for Southampton. He was either Italian or Argentinian, but he, he, I think he ended up just deciding not to like, want to play football anymore. Is that right? But the whole, I remember the whole thing was just a bit of a shambles. But you don't see, like, again, especially these days, you don't see stuff like that going on because no. it's like so... Especially in like Premier League level, because it's like such well-oiled machines and stuff. Yeah. So when you have stuff like that does happen, it's quite funny. But it was also kind of typical of Sunderland around about that time, where like, everything was kind of going yeah, wrong. Everything was going wrong, just more and more. They had poor signings, poor attitude players. Like with Darren Gibson getting pissed in pubs and car crashes. Yeah. And, and then Jack like, Rodwell. Yeah, Rod, and then like the board, like when they'd went down, because they were flirting with relegation for so long. Yeah. But it's like the board didn't expect it, because remember you tell me, they weren't putting rele- relegation release clauses in contract? No. Like, you're on about, um, you've got like a new league catamole now, whereas not long ago, some of them were in League One, paying league catamole like 40 grand a week, because yeah. they're still on Premier League money. Yeah. Um, it's crazy that that stuff can still go on now. And just people who refused, once we got to, got relegated, they refused to come back to training. All of this was on something for that. Lamina Kone, he's just like, well, I'm not, I'm not coming. It's like, why? As, but you have to still pay me. I'm like, well, no, you've breached your contract. contract yeah. yeah. So there's lots of that. I think Papi did your body as well. Yeah. I think, I think he was another one. There was a lot of lot of bad eggs. Did he and Dom? Was he that another one? Wasn't he that keen? I think he was all right. I think. Yeah, I think. I think. Off, I think that was amicable. That was more amicable than others. Um, but it, yeah. It was good for him that he left Sunderland, causing chaos at the time, to go to a stable club that's run very well. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he is now either. I don't know. Happier days now though, eh? Yeah. We're on the way up again. Yeah, absolutely. And again, speaking of happier days, one thing we used to always do was go through like your dream eleven yeah. from since you've been alive as a Sunderland fan. Yeah. So you were saying, well, I'm not sure what it is, we can wing it. Well let's wing it. Yeah. So what we're we going for? Take us through your th- what your team would be. Alright, so it's actually gonna be trickier than I thought. So uh, the the one goalkeeper that <sighs> I remember from childhood, it, I, I think it should be Craig Gordon because of this, like, save the century, yeah. and he, he was phenomenal. But, and he could have been for his arm break when he was at the peak of his powers and stuff. I just really, really enjoyed the steadiness of Tom Sonson. He was just 7.5 out of 10 every week, just solid. And then when he left, I think he went to Villa or something, he was equally as sort of fine for mm-hmm. them. Thomas Sorensen, don't think he made many mistakes. Uh, he was at Sunderland for quite a while. He, he would be my goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. I think I'll just go 4 4 2 because. It's classic 4 4 Yeah, yeah. Who do you like in that back? Um, so you, made, you said you mentioned him earlier on, you got yeah. him on the shot. What was yeah. that about who you like that you like so much? Um, for someone who came in, not even like European, obviously he's South American, he's Argentinian, he seemed to really just love playing for Sunderland, which is strange to have passion. For a club like something that you're from, like some other part of the world. Well, we had that with Zagiri, he was from Honduras. Yeah. A left back as well, actually. Yeah. So it's, it is quite cool when players just like take to a club like that. Uh, great free kicks, good at defending, which fullbacks sometimes lack nowadays, but would always get up the wing, get balls into the likes of Quinn and stuff. So just like, and he, he was there for as long as he could be realistically before we had to, we moved him on, I think, to Middlesbrough. Um, but he was there for like he, he seemed to want to be there mm-hmm. every season that he was there. So like, and he said he still loves him in the northeast. I think so. I still I think he certainly was up until like a year or two ago. Yeah, 
think he was playing, I think I saw on some football channel, uh, I think he was turning up for a Sunday league team or something, just for a bit of fun. So, yeah, he just seemed like a good guy. I do like him. Um, right back. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned him before, I, and it's not his position and he's not very good, but uh, Luke and I, yeah, I, have to, I, have to, I have to get him in. Uh, he is hated by all opponents. He's hated by all of them. All opponents, fans, especially the likes of Portsmouth. Fans. I was going to say, I remember we watched that. I think when I was visiting you up here one time, it was a playoff game in League in League One. I think it was. Yeah. And it was an away leg to Pompey, and I think he like, he went in a very typical Luke Nyan tackle where he just like slid through somebody. Yeah. To like block a throw in on the halfway line. Yeah. And he just kept sliding, and sliding, and then he slid into like the ad barrier, and his momentum then to take him over into like the front row. Yeah. And then these Pompey fans just started trying to batter him. Yeah, they started punching him, yeah. and then he just he tweeted. Got up he, and he, was like, he just tweeted later that his little brother hits harder than them, and just sort of <laughs> winds them up. He just winds everyone up. He's got like a shit eating grin. Yeah. Um, he's absolutely despisable, yeah. and he's great. Yeah, and he he just tries. He tries so hard. I think he wants to be a good footballer. I couldn't believe he wasn't Irish because he's got the most Irish name in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll get a cap frame one day, I'm sure. Because <laughs> England well, don't have enough right backs. Well, he's a, he's a utility player. Whack him on the bench. You know, you, could, you could just put him anywhere. He's a, a dream on football manager. Yeah. Just play him anywhere. Yeah, it's like the old John Fleck on football manager. He was at least unconvincing in all positions. Or like Ray from the Cubs back in the day. Yeah. Play him anywhere. Yeah. Shout out Ray in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> So who's centre half then? Centre halves. I haven't thought this far through. Um, again, I'm just going to go for nostalgia as opposed to quality. Yeah, that's what it's about. Um, it's about it's your team. It's, yeah. it's not like stats based who is the best in each position. Yeah. I like Nyron Osworthy. He could play right back, but I'm going to put him at least sort of right of centre back. Nyron Osworthy, just a big, tall, strong, sort of old fashioned centre back. Hard tackles. Wasn't It wasn't a ball playing defender. But he was there, uh, he, and again, he was there for quite a long time. I think he was, at one point, one of our longest-serving players sort of out of the squad yeah. there at the time, so I really liked him. Um, who else would I have? I might go a little bit older. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Jordy Craddock, because he was sort of our... Jordy Craddock, let's get him in, hang on. He's up I, here, is he not? Again. Is he? I think he's up there. Yeah. There we go. We'll get this in for And I think, uh, I think again, he could play left back. Jody Craddock. So I can play on the left side of centre half. So, yeah, picture of Jody Craddock. Yep. Uh, Harry, Harry got me for my <laughs> birthday one year. So, yeah, gonna have Jody Craddock. Uh, uh, again, just for nostalgia purposes, um, he was good, solid centre half. And at the time, we were doing well. Um, so when, was he, when was he playing then? Around the same sort of time, yeah. as, uh, sort of 2000. Early 90s. Yeah, early 90s sort of time. I think he went and had a relatively good career at, I'd like to say Watford, but um, Hull maybe. Mm-hmm. maybe I'm going to say Hull. They went sort of yellow. Wow. Yeah, I think he was there. It's too many I think he was there until he was like 38, 39. Wow. Well. So I think he had a long, long career. So that's that. That's your back four. Uh, I'll do just a, a standard number six, which is a defensive midfielder, not okay. a centre half. Uh, Lee Catmull, he will be, he will be there. Um, On his massive wages. Yeah, yeah, he was wages. He was at us when we were good. Um, he wasn't very good. He was at us when we were bad, and he was sort of like a captain. I could put Grant Ledbit in there because he loves Thunder more than Lee Catmull, but Lee Catmull is 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 the height of what Sunderland was at that time. Lee Catmull with honour. Yeah, yeah. That, that's no longer on YouTube, that's how we that isn't video. it? No, because maybe we looked for it once. Yeah, just like to show somebody else. He, he does a step over. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a five there. second clip of him doing a step over on the halfway line. And that was it. Lee Cat Molodon. Taylor, his free kick was really the best moment for Wigan. But this might be changing. That's a great run by Catamol and a wonderful save by Howard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did we not get like your, your t shirt that comes one night out for that? Yes, there was. Yeah, it was. It's it. It was under the year leaving night. I think we got you a couple of things. Yes. Because we got you a Sunderland shirt that just had like AGC on it. Yeah. And I'm sure there was a Lee Catmull Madonna t shirt as well. There was. I think it was just a normal t shirt right. that you got stuff printed on it. Lee yeah. Catmull. Yeah. There's probably some in the attic. <laughs> uh, go left, left midfield. And 
Yeah. Uh, again, I think this guy may have already played about 14 times or something. Uh, <laughs> but but you, you left a mark on you. Yeah, this, it was the time when I when I went to quite a few games. So David Bellion. Oh. He, the start of the whole tapping up affair that was going on. You know when there was like that club's tapping up. Yeah, like Ash, Ash Cole was probably the biggest example. Of yeah, I think Bellion was one of the first she examples. Sold, she's Man United. You signed him from. No, we gave him. Gave him sold from, him yeah, to Man United. Yeah. The Man United tapped him up from right, us. Okay, okay. Uh, French guy couldn't really play football, but like the fastest. I think probably. Definitely the fastest player I've ever seen. Probably one of the fastest players ever. He, he couldn't actually play football. He was just absolutely rapid. rapid. Yeah. And, yeah, I just remember watching him in one of the few games that we saw and just, just watching how fast he went. It was just, it was unbelievable. So, yeah, I would go with that. Don't know why. There's so many others. You know, you could have, like, Kevin Kill Bands or something like that. Um, but, yeah, no. I, so I, I, liked, I like that. Who's on the right, then? Um, Sebastian Larson. Uh, he, he's not a winger per se, he's sort of a, a wide midfielder. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, David Beckham. Yes, exactly. Type, yeah, yeah. He didn't run, but he would spray balls. Great free And he can let Luke and Iron overlap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so he'll, he'll run for days with yeah. Iron. But no, uh, I, I do like. He was a good like, player for a long time at Sunderland. He was, was a very good player. He scored like a volley at Anfield. He scored some belters. Yeah. He did score some. A scorer belters. of not a lot of goals, but good goals. When yeah. He did score them. Yeah. Uh, aye, free, free kicks. He was good at set pieces, yeah. Um, I think he did score when it was Kieran McGinn. I'm um, sure it was Liverpool. Ars- Arsenal. Arsenal maybe. as well, yeah. Maybe. Now I need to pick an attacking midfielder. We, we've not really done old fashioned sort of attacking midfielders for a while. I could have had Bobby Cash, I think it's more of a. Oh, yeah, you could have Bobby Cash, really. Luxury player, yeah, no, uh, because you can shove Wabi Kazri wide and play last in, inside if need be. Ah, but Wabi Kazri plays on the left, yeah. so um, shall I go another one of the sort of modern day modern day players? Sure, team it, do what you want. Yeah, I'll go modern day. I'm gonna say, um, again, he can play on the wing and he sometimes does, but uh, Alex Fitcher, he's playing number 10, yeah, he's been like a what well, no. Uh, there's only one number 10 at Sunderland. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. this newfangled yes. number 10 role, the number 8 role, In the attack being uh, attacking midfield is <laughs> number 8. Um, yeah, he's he's been pivotal in Sunderland's recent success. He's been absolutely outstanding. Um, just standard advanced playmaker. Uh, he'll get the ball from Cap Mobile, he'll tackle, give him the ball, and then he can play any pass he wants out wide or, or up top. Yeah, I would. I'd have to go with that. Just, again, just plays the first one that comes to my mind. That's what I'm going with. Like, I remember that guy yeah. because of this. And then up top, I will struggle through it because I want to fit into foe in there, but then I don't want to break up Phillips and Quinn. Yeah. But I might just put in someone who's rubbish because I like them. Just I mean, Phillips has got weird. Yeah, Phillips, Ken Ken Phillips he's, yeah, he's our, yeah. One of our best ever players. Um, just an old fashioned natural centre forward. He knew positioning. Uh, he knew when the ball was coming in. He could left, right, foot. He wasn't that tall. Fewer headers, but you know, thirty goals in thirty six games in a that, season in the Premiership. Because that was the big man, wee man com- combination. Yeah, wasn't it? So. Yeah, that's why I can't have to foe him because the foe's strengths were positioning, knowing where the ball's going. They was just very, very he similar said, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of playing the same. You could have the phone. Quinn could be the the manager slash owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do I want to just put in someone daft up top like Danny Beachy or something? No, I don't want to put Danny Beachy up top. Um, again, I would. I'm a huge Ross Stewart fan. So yeah, I, yeah I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have Quinn as the owner slash manager. There we go. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Ross Stewart. Oh, just sorry. again, same reasons as Pritchard. Just. just Huge accomplishment. Uh, he's been the one that's got us back to where we are now for his goals last year. Yeah, I don't think that he was thought much. Well, I mean, people up here knew that he was going. He was good, but I, um, I don't think anyone expected him to be as good as he was when he went down. He didn't set the world on fire at Ross County, no, uh, from what I've heard. You can see that there was a player there though. They played him on the wing. That was weird. Five. Yeah, it was like this big lump, and I'm like, what are they doing? He's quick, uh, so he can play as a winger, but he's wasted. Yeah. Uh, on on the wing, uh, but he, he's got the running. He's not. He's not a target man that will just wait for the ball to come through and flick it on. He'll do the running, so I appreciate him for that. 
And again, yeah, he's he took he he had a massive impact in taking us up last year. He broke through that ceiling because you were knocking on the door for like so long. Yeah. There was a lot of like underwhelming League One campaigns where suddenly we were like so well off it. Yeah. So to eventually just get up, like that was the big thing. And look, like you said, look at you now, like all of a sudden you're like a solid. I mean, I know it's still August. Yeah, but the early, yeah. the early signs are good. Nah, he's got three goals yeah. in four or five games. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. It's just getting up and then, you know, take it from there. Yeah. No, I like Ross Stewart. Um, I think he's good. I think we're lucky that Rangers didn't take him. Rangers were yeah, really they were hot into him for a while. He could still go. I don't know what the situation's going to be after Alex Neal. But I mean, if, the only thing, if Rangers are only going to come back in from, I think, if they get rid of Morelos, but that might be quite hard because who in the right mind would be signing him right now? Yeah. With all of his discipline problems and yeah. his like fitness issues. Not many squads ever. Yeah. yeah. This is a son of the um, Rangers, especially now that Corbett for the Champions League, have the money to like be able to go and buy a guy like Ross Stewart easily. But yeah. It's whether or not they have the space in the squad. Yeah. Because there's no point in them having like Cholak, Roof, Morelos, and Ross Stewart when they play one up front. Yeah. If uh, you're going to be fine unless they sell Morelos, then. Well, and I don't think there's enough time for that really. So no, there's, there's less than a week left. I don't think. No. So I think it's like it's either the last day of August or like first or second of September. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah, Ross Stewart. I mean, none of these players are the best, apart from Phillips. I would argue, and our best left back was probably Cody um, Walker. But there's players that I just liked. Yeah. I just like the way they did things. I mean, I could have put in Daphne's like when we had Adnan Yazan, and I was just whack it in there for a bit of fun. But um, no. Um, I wanted to go a little bit old, a little bit yeah, sort of yeah. newish and, and current day. So we've got three current day ones, a few from back in the day. You got a nice actually, actually, I am going to withdraw a centre half. Oh, controversial at the end. Yeah. I'm who's, gonna, who's getting dropped? I'm going to drop Nosworthy. Who for? John O'Shea. Yeah! yeah. I was shocked yeah. when you didn't yeah. put John O'Shea in. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> keep, yeah John O'Shea. Um, I want to keep Johnny Craddock. But no, I, I, I just remember Nosworthy was there for. For so long, but yeah. yeah, John O'Shea, he was awful, but good. He was just at the end of his career. I think he was there the same time we had Wes Brown yeah. and maybe even Dwight York and Andy Cole. I could just watch like old Manchester Man, United teams. Like that. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I've got a John O'Shea. I could have had him at Old Midfield. He's got he's got to be in your team as well. I think for how good he was for Ireland as well. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got a couple of them. Another one Ireland. I remember of you in the pub watching football. You was. Uh, like we had Scotland Poland on one TV and it was Ireland Germany on the other one. Yeah. And we were like buzzing with getting a draw away in in, in Warsaw. Yeah. And then um, and did you win that game? Or yeah. That draw? Uh, yeah. And one, no. John O'Shea just pops up in the last minute to get a winner. Yeah. And everyone's like, ah, getting a draw in Poland's not as impressive, right? <laughs> <laughs> John yeah. O'Shea just scored the winner against the world champions. Yeah. I. I'm glad I, O'Shea. I, I, on. Yeah, I just completely blank for o, O'Shea. Completely forgot about him. But yeah, he was there. So that's your team. Yeah. Owner is slash manager is Neil Quinn. I, I, like, I'll have him as my owner. I'll yeah. have I'll I'll have Peter Reed as my manager. Peter. Yeah. Who's the captain of the team? Uh Catmull. Catmull, yeah. Catmull will be the captain. He he would have to he's a he's a centre midfielder, that's where the captain should be. For professional teams. Wearing number six. Wearing number six. That was, yeah, that's yeah. Where, me me and you have the eternal debate of four and six. I'm a, a four in midfield guy, six set and a half, I think you're the opposite. Yeah. Number number four is the centre half. You go, you know, two right back, three left back, four and five in the middle, and then six, seven, eleven, eight, nine, ten up top. That's the way it is. And thirteen is the Sully goalkeeper. Yeah. And on that note, yeah, we've been schooled by the school teacher. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, having a wee chat. Yeah, it's been good. It's and, been uh, good. Who knows? Maybe we will see you again in the future. Maybe, maybe. maybe. You never know. You never know what could happen. But in the meantime, we're going to go to the scraps and chippy. Yes, yes we are. Yes. I think I think the owner of the chippy sent me a message about something. Yes, that's that's the kind of service you get up in, uh, <laughs> yeah. in KFS. Let's see what the chippy said. takes you. Uh, hey bud, just saw this. Booked your table for six to eight o'clock. Let me know if you still want to reserve it. Yes, I we do. will be there. Yes. We so do. until next time, I'm post chippy. Yeah, absolutely. Keep it balanced. See you later. <laughs>